Welcome. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to overcome your limiting beliefs. So there are four key steps to overcoming limiting beliefs, at least in the work that I do with my clients. I'm sure there are many other methodologies out there, but this seems simple and it seems to work really, really well. Now, the thing about limiting beliefs are that most of the time we're not even aware that they're operating. They're operating subconsciously. They're like little programs running that we don't actually see running. Step one of overcoming your limiting beliefs is to even recognize that you have them. And that's where awareness comes in. We've got to cultivate awareness of our limiting beliefs. How do we do that? Well, number one, the easiest way to do that is to look in any area of your life where there's discomfort. Any area of your life where you have a persistent complaint is what I call it. A persistent complaint is an area where you find yourself blaming, shaming, complaining over and over again. It's one thing to have a complaint that pops up once and maybe you deal with it or maybe you don't. It's quite another to have something that keeps popping up and again and again. So for example, I never have enough money or I'm always trying to make ends meet or I never have the kind of relationship that I want. These are persistent complaints. You wanna look for things like always and never, or I keep, or this keeps happening over and over. Wherever you have those persistent complaints, you wanna dig in, right? Develop awareness means looking at that thing and really picking it apart. So for example, if we find that we have an awareness that we have a persistent complaint around making ends meet and having enough money in our business or in our life, then we can ask ourselves, all right, what are my beliefs about money? So you start to ask questions and I would suggest that you look back into your childhood. You're asking yourself, what did I learn about money as a child? What do I believe about money? What did I learn about money from my mother? What did I learn about money from my father? What are my beliefs about money? Do I believe that it's hard to make money or do I believe it's easy to make money? And just listing down all of the beliefs that you hold about money, just one by one without judgment, just capture the limiting beliefs that you have about this area that you have this persistent complaint in. The second thing you want to do is to challenge those beliefs. So the way that you challenge it is one by one, you go through and you say, is this absolutely true all the time in every situation for me and for everyone else? So you want to distinguish what is a universal truth from what is a limiting belief. So the second thing is to challenge the belief itself, the veracity of that belief that you hold very deeply apparently. And what you're looking for is examples of it not being true. Even if it's just a couple of examples, what you need to do is disprove, challenge, that it is true across the board universally. So back to the example from above, money. I find that I'm having this persistent complaint about making ends meet. And let's say you discover in your childhood that you have a belief that that it has to be really hard to make money and you have to work your butt off. And maybe you have a belief that if you work, work, work to make money and make ends meet, then you're going to miss out on life and it's not going to be any fun. This could be your particular set of beliefs or someone else's. Then you want to challenge yourself and say, all right, is it hundred percent universally true always that you have to work, work, work your ass off and lose your life and your joy and your health in order to make money? Well, do I know anybody who makes money easily and gracefully? And then just see, do you know somebody? Maybe there's a Hollywood actor that you see doing, you know, all the things that they love to do all the time, never having to sacrifice, or maybe there's somebody in your backyard, somebody that you know personally, but what you're looking for is someone who disproves that limiting belief. Now, before I continue, I want to invite you to like my video, subscribe to my channel and comment below. I love to hear how these videos land for you and maybe even what kind of videos you'd like to see more of. And by the way, also click on that little bell button so that you can get alerts every time I drop a new video. Now, the third thing you want to do is move beyond just the mental aspect of this. See, so far we've, we've operated just in the mental. 
identifying the limiting belief, finding the things that challenge that limiting belief, finding truth, whether something's universally true or not. But the third step is to go a layer deeper and go into the emotion of it and to feel the cost. Feel the cost of the limiting belief. Now that you know that actually this limiting belief is not 100% universally true across the board, for some reason it's true for you, feel the cost of believing it. What are you sacrificing? What are you giving up by holding that belief without challenging it? What are you giving up? So let's say back to the money example, what are you giving up by believing that it's really hard to make money and that if you work hard and make money, then you're going to miss out on the things that are joyful and fun in life. What's that costing you? Well, it's probably costing you joy. It's probably costing you the things that you love to do because you think that you have to work hard and you can't do those fun things, right? Feeling the feelings of the cost, feeling what you're giving up and really I would say mourning the things that you've given up already in your life as a result of holding these beliefs. This is a really critical piece that a lot of people skip over. People skip over this because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to feel resentment or to feel regret or to feel sadness. And we tend to, as humans, avoid these feelings at all costs. But the thing about feeling the feelings is that it gives us fuel for action. If we just stay up here in the mental, there's often not enough fuel for sustained action. And so when we feel something, it starts to bubble up and build up energy. Emotion, think of it, emotion is energy in motion, literally. Emotional energy is what drives action in life. When we desire something, we move towards something. Think about the last time you really wanted something in your life and you went after it. I'm guessing that there was a reservoir of emotion that helped you go do that. And so feeling the feelings, feeling the cost of the mourning, of the resentment, the sadness, the regret can build up energy to take some new action and claim a new belief. Now you might not think it takes all that much energy just to claim a new belief, but it does. Because once you claim a new belief, a lot of times everything in your life has to reorganize to align with that new belief. So if you had to give up the story that in order to be successful and achieve, you'd have to give up, you'd have to work, work, work and sacrifice yourself and give up everything you love. If you had to give up that story, all of a sudden claiming this thing, like I claim grace and ease and joy in my career, you might have to quit your job. You might have to start a new business. You might have to change a whole bunch of things in your life. There might be a need for a whole lot of energy to take action because when you claim a new belief, oftentimes that means that all of a sudden every area of your life that's out of alignment with that belief needs to shift. And that's sometimes really challenging or it could be really easy too. I don't want to give you the limiting belief that it's always challenging to change things in your life because it's sometimes very joyful and easy and pleasant. If you are a coach, a speaker, an author, a consultant, or other kind of expert, and you're looking to drop your limiting beliefs and grow your business in a way that's joyful and energy rich and sustainable and scalable, let's connect. You can book time with me for free you can both book a discovery call with me at superstaractivator.com slash go, or just click on the link below in the notes.